Then Ebola came out. And Ebola worse than AIDS because you know Ebola liquefies your internal organs. They literally turn into liquid. And they start oozing out of every edifice in your body. Guess what? Ebola comes from the Congo too. Another type of monkey. Okay? Now I got a question for you. Why the Congo? The Congo is the richest piece of real estate on the face of the earth. Do you know that there's more diamonds, gold, coltan, oil, you name it, in the Congo than any other nation on the face of the earth? In fact, we all got a cell phone right now, laptop at home, car outside, which you probably wouldn't have if it wasn't for a mineral called coltan. Cobalt and titanium, they bring them together, it makes coltan. You cannot have an electromagnetic communication device without it. The reason why the monkey had to come from the Congo is so you would never think about going to the Congo so nobody sees what the hell they're doing over there. Do you know that they're actually fomenting the wars that's going on between the gangs? Arming this one, arming that one, giving them pennies while they run away with all the minerals. Why do you think they assassinated Patrice Lumumba back then? Who, in my opinion, was the strongest of all the Pan-Africanists, okay? Because Lumumba said, you ain't going to steal from our country no more. If you want it, you're going to pay for it. So the CIA director, Alan Dulles, Eisenhower, and the rest of them got with the uh, government of Belgium and said, you know what? Get him out of here. They took that brother, two of his comrades, and sliced their body up into little titty pieces and put them in acid. And the only thing that survived was the teeth and a piece of his skull. And a couple years ago on BBC News, they did an interview with some of the Belgian officers who were there during the assassination of Patrice Lumumba. And one of the officers reached into his pocket, pulled out a napkin, and guess what he unrolled? He still had Patrice Lumumba's teeth. Ain't never did a day of jail in town, and he was laughing about it. Look at what they do to us, and then they laugh about it. But at the same time, young men, don't be so quick to run out there and fight, because we good for that. I had one brother say, well, you know what, why don't we just start bombing cop calls? You silly Negro. First of all, they can see everything you do. And by the way, in case you don't know about the Telecommunications Act, every text message, every voice message, every email message, every phone message goes into a central repository. It is never destroyed or deleted ever. Okay? Did everybody hear me? There is no privacy in America. That was one of the first things they undone, and the latest Telecommunications Act came under President Bill Clinton. He did that. There is no privacy anymore. You are already being screened. You got, I don't want nobody in my business. Your business, hell, is they business. You don't have no business. What business? Chicken wings, shrimp egg foo young? What business do you own? Because you ain't got a supermarket. You ain't got a private school. You ain't got an airplane or a submarine. By the way, Bob Johnson, who sold BET to Viacom for $2 billion, actually wanted to start the first black international airplane business because he saw how much money black people spend in the travel industry. And you know what they said? They said, nigga, here go basketball. You better get out my face and give him the Charlotte Bobcats. That's right. That's right. Bill Cosby been trying to get a major network since the beginning of the time. And I take issues with Bill, don't get me wrong. Okay, don't get me wrong, but at the same time, here was a black man who was trying to buy a major network. They sent him somewhere else. See, there's certain industries that are not open to black folks unless they organize. How is it that Michael Jordan is the first former NBA player to become a majority owner of an NBA team? And the NFL still ain't had a black owner yet. See, what we fail to realize, my brothers, who like running around with the Eagles flags in your car, when you run around with that Eagles flag, you don't even know that you're supporting white supremacy. See, the Philadelphia Eagles is a corporation. The Philadelphia Phillies is a corporation. They buy, they trade, they sell, they exploit internationally. It's a white corporation. And we got a bad habit of doing that. It's amazing, too, because you'll see Irish people will have the Irish flag, Italian people have the Italian flag, and a Negro will have an Eagles flag and a Sixers flag on the other side of the window with some dark-ass glasses on, thinking he's doing something. So we got to wake up. First of all, what we got to do, we got to start pulling that money together. You know why black folks don't own anything? Because we don't trust each other. We don't trust each other without money. Now you want to put a dollar bill in this? I get his brother a dollar. I'll be calling him every five minutes to make sure he ain't spent my damn dollar. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? You know why the Orientals get a head up on you? They get off the boat. 20 families will shack up in one house. And won't nobody leave the house till everybody in the family got their own business. Do you know that? It's what the Indians do, because everybody has a do-for-self collective mentality except the black man. And guess what? This is good because we need the education. But then it's got to be transformed into action. Because guess what? We have lectured ourselves into extermination. It is time for action. But the problem is, the truth of the matter is, most of us are not ready 
for that action. And so, guess what? Everybody else uses it except us. Except us. So where do I think black people are going to be at ultimately in the next 100 years? We're in the 21st century. Where do I think we're going to be in the 22nd? This is what I think. I don't think there's going to be a single African-American left in the next century. I think you're going to be replaced with African immigrants from Africa. Why them? Number one, they need our intellectual genius. We have it. The immigrant Africans have it. They need it. Okay? That's number one. Number two, they got to find a way to get rid of you because they owe you too much. See, when you owe somebody too much, simplest thing that they do is do what? Gangsters? They get rid of them. So these 40 million black people, we got to get rid of them. The reason why you got so many prisons, people, ain't because you're committing crimes. The reason why you have so many prisons is because they're trying to get you out of the population as whole. Well. That's why. And by the way, for my Pennsylvania parents, in case you ain't heard the news, there's a new law, the Keystone Exam Law. I did three lectures on this, but I want to give it to you real brief. This is the latest plot. Beginning in 2015 in the state of Pennsylvania, and this applies to any child you have from seventh grade or younger, Beginning in 2015, state of Pennsylvania, there's going to be 10 tests called the Keystone exam. Your child cannot fail more than four. You must pass six. If you fail more than four, you do not get a high school diploma in this state. That's all 67 counties. That's all 501 school districts. And if you think I'm making this up, go to the Pennsylvania Department website. There's already 25 states who have this test. And guess what? States that have the mandatory graduation exams have, have some of the highest incarceration rates in the country. Pennsylvania is building four new maximum security prisons right now. Do you want to know why? Because they know your kids ain't going to pass that test. How do they know your kids ain't going to pass that test? Because you don't socialize them to pass that test. I mean, let's think about it. A black child is born, they run around the house for five years. They go to kindergarten, might know how to spell the first two letters of their name. But by the time they get to the fifth grade, they can't even read, but they got Xbox, all the latest sneakers, all the latest Christmas gifts at home. You are your child's problem, not the teacher. And you're hearing this from a psychologist. I argue with parents. I don't care. I'm going to say, let me tell you something. Your son should have knew how to write his name before he got to my test test. If you know your son can't read, why you ain't working with him at home, parents? If you know your daughter can't do math, why you ain't working with her at home? Do you know that if they don't get that high school diploma, they're going to get a certificate of completion, and they will be shut out of any life activity whatsoever? They won't even be able to go into the military, even though I don't think no black child should be going into the military because they're the first to die. They put them right on the front line. We was about 70% of the ground troops in uh, the Iraq war back in the 90s. Furthermore, the, being, be a, being a black person in the military is damn near being like a black person in the FBI, the CIA. By the way, do you know that it was undercover snipers from the U.S. Army that shot Dr. King? And it was the Ku Klux Klan who told, doc, told them where Dr. King was. So believe it or not, the white secret hate groups worked with the government. Remember, it was the U.S. government that told Lucky Luciano, as long as he could get these drugs in the hood, we'll pardon you, you'll get out of jail early. Okay? So they all work together. White supremacy is white supremacy. Illegal and legal. The bottom line is they got one goal in mind, the extermination of all African people, period, at least in America. At least in America. But they're working on Africa because even though there's 800 million people in Africa at the rate of AIDS, they say that there might not be a black person on the continent by 2052. That's your lifetime. Could you imagine going to Africa with no black people? That's what they're trying to do because even though you hate Africa, they love Africa. They love it. They're always there. When I was on the airplane in Nigeria, I thought I was on my way to Tokyo. The whole airplane was oriental. And you know what they're doing in Nigeria? They are buying up the industry just like they do right outside your house. In Nigeria, they own all the chicken farms. They own all the turkey farms. They own half the fast food restaurants. Nigeria and certain states in Nigeria look just like North Philly. And guess what? When they go to Africa, they catch malaria, but they still keep on coming back. See that? You got aliens coming and taking over your native land because you don't want nothing to do with it. Talking about you ain't left nothing in Africa. The worst thing you can do is cut yourself off from your life vein. Because as Africa goes, you go. The reason why you get disrespected in America is because the black man in Africa gets no respect. Do you really think that you can set yourself up as a nation apart? In fact, that's what the Hispanics are doing. Because remember, up until 1970, there was no such thing as a Hispanic. There was Africans who spoke Spanish and Africans who spoke English. But because they knew that the Africans who spoke Spanish, many of them didn't want to accept the fact that they were African, they gave them a name for themselves and called it Hispanic. So when they talk about the Hispanics about to surpass the blacks, you got to ask, what is the definition of it? Because a lot of the people you're talking about are blacker than me and my mother. You understand? They are using names and titles to separate people. Now, Haiti. Let's talk about this Haiti nonsense. 
Hugo Chavez, the president of Venezuela on CNN, a few days after the hurricane, said that the United States Army Corps of Engineers was testing atomic weapons on the ocean floor by Haiti. And it was the atomic weapons that caused the earthquake, not nothing natural. You want to know why Hugo Chavez knows that? The earthquake wasn't even meant for Haiti. It was meant for Venezuela. But they missed the mark. And if you notice, it's been three or four other Central uh, uh, American nations been hit because they can't quite get it right, but they're doing it to smash him. Oh, they, they did hit him? Okay, so they did hit him. I didn't even know that. You see this? He has perfected the art of using nature against you. And you know what's so suave about it? You never know for sure whether it was nature or him. That's what he did in Hurricane Katrina, which was so sad. I was down there last summer. Okay, they ain't fixed nothing up in the Ninth Ward. Half the black people wasn't allowed to go back home. But the rich white folks was allowed to come in and rebuild. Do you want to know why they moved everybody out of the Ninth Ward? Why did they flush the brothers and sisters out? Because a few weeks prior, you know how they do the, uh, the oil taps? They go, they found oil under the projects. Yes! They found oil under the ground with all these poor black people, and they said, how are we going to let them get out of here and not know we got this? Somebody said, wash their asses out. And that's exactly what they did. For oil, good people. For oil.